What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the PS3 emulator RPCS3 on Mac. The system I will be using is a Mac Mini with the M2 chip. Okay, let's head on over to rpcs3.net. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, at the top of the page, you will see download. This emulator is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Since we are using Mac, we're gonna download the Mac version. Do you want to allow this download? Allow. And we are also gonna need a PS3 BIOS to get our PCS3 up and running. So here we are at PlayStation.com. I will leave the link to this page in the description below as well. And if you come down here to where it says how to update PS3 system software, you wanna click the plus button next to update using a computer. And then you will get this button here, download PS3 update. Go ahead and right click on this button and then select download link file. And your download should start. Now go ahead and open your downloads folder and you will see RPCS3. We're gonna move that to our desktop and you will also see your PS3 BIOS file. We're gonna move that to the desktop. So here on my desktop, I have the actual emulator folder, RPCS3. I have my BIOS file and I have a folder that I created called PS3 files. Now this PS3 BIOS file does not have to be extracted. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this into that folder I created, PS3 files. And also, as you see inside of this folder, I have three games. Now I am sorry, I cannot tell you where to get PS3 ROMs, but they are not hard to find. Just do a Google search, or you can check my Patreon page, link in the description below, and I will have a video that can help you there. Also, all of your PS3 ROMs must be extracted to be playable in RPCS3, and on Mac, it's super simple. Once you have a PS3 ROM, all you have to do is double click it, and it will start extracting, and it will give you a folder, as you see here for my three games, and inside of that folder will contain some other files. Now let's open our RPCS3 folder, and this file here will be the actual emulator. If you get this pop-up saying it can't be open, go ahead and click on cancel. And on your desktop, let's go up to the top left and click on the Apple logo. Go to system settings. Come down to privacy and security. Then let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you will see right here, RPCS3 was blocked. Go ahead and click on open anyway. Then enter your Apple password and click on modify settings. Then you will get another pop-up, Mac OS cannot verify the developer of RPCS3. This time you will have the option to open. So go ahead and click on open. And then the emulator will open. Okay, welcome to RPCS3. So here you have the option to create a desktop shortcut. You can create a launch pad shortcut and by default it will be checked to use the dark theme. I actually prefer to use the dark theme and I'm gonna go ahead and check create desktop shortcut and then check down here. I have read the quick start guide and continue. Now go ahead and make the emulator full screen so you can access your settings. Now the first thing we're gonna do is load our BIOS file into the emulator. So let's go up to the top left, click on file and install firmware. And this is gonna be that BIOS file that we downloaded earlier from the actual PlayStation site, which I have on my desktop in the folder I created called PS3 files. Here it is right here. Click on it and then hit open. Successfully install PS3 firmware, okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is add my games to the emulator. So let's go back up the file add games. I'm gonna locate that same folder on my desktop, PS3 files. Successfully added software to game list from patch, okay. And there are my three games. Now let's set up our controller. Let's go back up to the top and click on pads. Now an Xbox One or Xbox Series controller will work with this emulator or an actual PS5 controller, which in my case, I will be using a PS5 controller. Make sure your controller has a connection with your Mac before doing this. 
So right here where it says handlers, I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down arrow. And since I'm using a PS5 controller, I'm going to select DualSense. And that is really all you have to do. And just like that, my buttons are mapped out for me. And since I am using an actual PlayStation controller, all of my buttons here will match up. And if you are using an Xbox controller, this emulator will map that controller out as well. But just know that using your Xbox controller, your Y button will be triangle, your X button will be square, your A button will be cross, and your B button will be circle. And if for some reason you want to change any of those buttons, all you simply have to do is click on the button you want to change. So let's say we wanted to change our triangle button. You would just double click it and then hit whatever button on your controller you want to be that new button. Now to save this controller layout, let's go up here to the top right and click on add configuration and go ahead and give this controller a name. I'm just going to call it P1. Now, if you have multiple controllers connected to your Mac, you can repeat the same thing. Up here, you have player two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We are finished here. Let's come down here to save. Now let's go up to config. Under CPU, we're gonna leave everything here at its default settings. And we're gonna go over to GPU. And right here where it says an isotropic filter, we're going to go ahead and boost this up. I'm going to select four times. This will make your games look a little sharper. Now over here, you will see default resolution. Now this is not how you upscale your games. Instead, you want to come down here to resolution scale. And to increase your resolution, you want to slide this forward. So right now it's setting at 100%, which is 720p. So if we move this up, to 150%, that's 1080p. 200% is 1440p, and 300% is 4K. I don't wanna push my Mac too hard with the M2 chip. It will do fine at 1080p. Now, if you decide that you wanna go 1440p or 4K, and you notice that your game is stuttering, then most likely all you need to do is come back here and lower the resolution. And over here, under additional settings, now you may not need to do this, but if you are experiencing any screen tear, then you want to turn on VSync. Now let's come over here to apply and then save. Now before we load up a game, we're going to check to see if any of our games have patches. So let's go back up to the top and we're going to click on manage and then go down to game patches. New patches are available. Do you want to update? Yes. We are now up to date. Okay, now it's gonna give you a list of a bunch of random PS3 games that have patches. Of course, you don't have all of these games. So what you wanna do is come up here to only show owned games and check this. And then it'll show you only patches available for the games that you have. In my case, the only game that has patches is Demon Souls. Now these patches will be different for each game. They can be things such as resolution change, game bug fixes, or frame rate change. So let's click on Demon Souls, then click right here. And as you see, we have aspect ratio can change. You can disable motion blur. You can skip the intro videos or unlock the FPS. So I'm gonna go ahead and check unlock FPS and disable motion blur. When you are done, you wanna come down to apply and save. Now, as I told you earlier, my Mac mini has a M2 chip and will play most PS3 games at 1080p resolution. But some games are easier to run and can run at 1440p or even 4K. Now, once you figure out what games can run at a higher resolution, then you may want to have custom configuration for that game. And to do that, all you wanna do is right click on that game. So let's do Little Big Planet 3. Right click on it and you will see here you have create custom configuration from global settings, default settings, and you can also create custom gamepad configuration. We're going to go ahead and do default settings. And now if we go over to GPU, you can go ahead and change some things around for Little Big Planet 3. So if I know that this game can run at 4K, I could go ahead and bump this up to 4K resolution. And these settings will only apply for this game. Now, if you have any update files for a particular game, which I don't, but I'm going to show you how to load those in. So if you do, you want to go up to file and install packages. 
and then you will simply locate wherever you have those update files for that particular game and you will go ahead and select open. And if you want to change the way your games are displayed here on the home screen of the emulator, then you can come up here and you can drag this forward to enlarge the games. And if you want to change your games from being in a list view to the grid view, you can click right here. Now let's load up a game and I'll do Little Big Planet 3. Now when you first load up a game, it's going to compile your PPU modules. And if you want to go full screen, then just hit Alt and Enter. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.